So we are at the Lampedusa conference with uh, Ilse Brands Keris, who is currently visiting fellow at Columba University and who was previ previously director of the office of the OSC High Commissioner on National Minorities. So today uh, you were discussant on the panel entitled Fortress Europe and Responsibility to Protect. So I would like you maybe to expand on two points that you addressed. So when we're talking about the responsibility to protect, who are we, what are we protecting, and who are the key actors? Thank you very much. Yes, I think these are um, important topics to frame in a context. And one of the questions is within Europe, and in particular also even focusing on the EU, who are we talking about? Who have hold the responsibility to protect? EU as an overall actor, is it the institutions we're talking about? Is it um, the community of member states we're talking about? Or actually member states implementing um, EU policies or uh, individually? And here again, the dimension of the external and internal dimension. Um, and this is important to remember because the responsibility to protect, of course, can in this way also be seen to be a test of the credibility of the EU. Are we consistent externally and internally in the policies? And do we um, do our work, the responsibility to uphold the human rights regime, in particular in this case in relation to questions of asylum and refugees? So in that context, I would argue that there, was, there is a responsibility most immediately, of course, a big issue these days to protect persons um, from death at sea. We have the Mare Nostrum uh, initiative that is sometimes presented as an EU good practice initiative, but as we know, it actually is one member state. It is not an EU policy. Um, EU's response to this most recently seems to be actually reinforcing uh, the more repressive parts of it, how to elaborate a comprehensive policy against smuggling, uh, which would seem to be a very narrow response to the responsibility to protect. Secondly, maybe the question, is there a responsibility to protect collectively as the concept as such has? which goes beyond this to look at stabilization factors, addressing issues, um, deaths, persecutions, and risk of atrocity um, at the source. And third, I would argue most importantly where the EU should have a strength is also the responsibility to protect the human rights within the area of asylum and refugees. This means access, to the rights um, to, to seek asylum and access to asylum, which as we know is uneven throughout the EU still. It is not something we can say has been evenly guaranteed. But moreover, also the protection of human rights of asylum seekers. Um, and here there are many shortcomings, but one can um, also bring attention to, for instance, the increased efforts also recently of the pushback operations. Very high risk uh, for violations, human rights violations of individuals, but in particular also um, mass expulsions. We have reports um, at times of uh, violence, uh, mistreatment use, but also collective expulsions still happening, which means that individuals actually um, don't even get the access to uh, claim uh, the, the right of asylum, don't even get to pose a claim. So all of these together, of course, are serious concerns where the EU has to question itself. The last point from the panel, I think all panelists agreed, is the issue of solidarity. It's not only an issue of responsibility, but solidarity of all member states doing their share. The North, of course, some countries taking the brunt of the until now small burden, but the burden of asylum seekers, refugees, the South taking the brunt of the irregular migrants, but obviously a lack of solidarity uh, despite the declared principle. So these are the main issues. Thank you. Thank you.